Several trails at Acadia National Park are closed until further notice and for good reason. It is nesting season for peregrine falcons. Now, falcon parents are preparing to raise their young, and the staff at Acadia are trying to provide them the peace that they need to do that. As 207's Beth McAvoy found, peace for their species isn't something they've always enjoyed. Their aerial acrobatics is really something that's incredible. The name peregrine means wanderer. Particularly when they are uh, chasing either a an intruding raptor or chasing uh, a prey species. A fitting name for a bird that has one of the longest migrations of any in North America. They move very fast, but with, with great agility as well. They're, they're quite amazing on the wing. And reaches speeds of 200 miles per hour. They're also a little moody. Peregrine falcons are extremely territorial. They will attack other birds in the area, but also other um, intruders that they would per perceive as intruders like humans who are hiking in the trails. The Jordan Cliffs at Acadia National Park have been a perfect nesting spot that mating pairs have returned to for several years. All of the sites, at least in Acadia, tend to be quite large cliff sites with expansive rock outcropping, tend to be uh, eastern facing. Likely that has to do with how warm it is with that morning sun, particularly when they're out in, in March trying to incubate eggs. The cliffs are also devoid of something falcons don't want. Inaccessible to um, mammalian predators like a raccoon or something like that. There will be no feathering of their nests. There's no nest building at all. It's called a scrape. and They literally will perhaps scrape a few pebbles out of the way and they just lay their eggs directly on the rock. Because their eggs are so exposed, peregrines lay them where few predators can reach. They're sounding a little lazy. <laughs> well, you know, um, they are. Uh, and and when I when I watch them, when I do monitoring, um, it's it's a long time for a few seconds of action. They they spend a lot of time just sitting on the cliff. Several mating pairs will spend the next few months laying, incubating and then raising their young. They take a really long time to raise their young. So they will tend to have uh, between two and four eggs and chicks per year. Peregrines have a long history at the park. They've been there since at least the 1930s. With the introduction of DDT, which um, led to declines in raptors, uh, many raptors, including the bald eagle and peregrine falcon, led to their population decline and largely the disappearance of peregrines in the east. It begins with the war born development of DDT. This diabolical weapon of modern science saved millions of humans, but killed billions of insects. By the mid-60s, peregrines were no longer breeding in the eastern U.S. Nest robbing, trapping, shooting all contributed to their decline, but it was DDT that brought them close to extinction. They weren't the only ones. The American bald eagle, also almost wiped out by DDT, has had a soaring comeback in the last decade. But back to peregrines. In the 70s and then into the 80s, there was a reintroduction plan, which involved what's called hacking and raising young chicks in artificial nest boxes on cliff sides. One of those sites in Maine was Jordan Cliffs in Acadia National Park. In 1985 and 86, 22 chicks were raised on the side of Jordan Cliffs. And then they subsequently came back in 1987 and, and began nesting. Since the uh, reintroduction in the mid 80s, there's been over 150 chicks that have hatched in and fledged in Acadia. Each chick born at Acadia is banded. What does it feel like to like hold a little chick? Well, it's terrifying on one hand. The bands ensure wildlife biologists can keep tabs on the birds, which remain a protected species. So we, we banded chicks at Valley Cove in, in 2018, and one of the females from that nest uh, was seen last year uh, in Lewiston, nesting and, and successfully raising their own chicks uh, on the uh, Franco-American Center in, um, in Lewiston. Biologists at Acadia continue to preserve and protect the peregrine falcon. But when a population completely goes extinct, there's no going back from that. And so all of these species and the way that they interact with the world, the way that we interact with them as well, is something special. Whether we 
uh, whether we spend a lot of time with them or not. And also it's, it's something that the, the National Park Service, that's a big part of our purpose, to conserve the natural and, and cultural aspects of parks for future generations. Wheeler says watchers will need a little patience. Watch them. They're, they're incredible to watch. Spend as much time as you can watching them because they're, they are quite incredible. Um, it takes a long time to see those few seconds of action, but it is absolutely worth it. Now, peregrines need lots of space. Acadia's wildlife biologists say there are only three or four mating pairs in Acadia, which is as many as they've ever had. Staff says as long as onlookers are not on the cliff where the peregrines are nesting, they won't bother them. Marvelous sight. Mm.